Hey everyone, Sean Frangella here again with the third part of the series all about cameras and camera animation and properties in Cinema 4D. So in the last two videos I covered a lot of animating cameras as well as a lot of properties of cameras like the aperture and depth of field and in this one I want to go over some of these built-in camera rigs that you can use which you can really do a lot of cool cinematic movement and have a lot of fun with. So what I'm talking about is this big scene that I have kind of set up with all of them and if we just pop into a couple of these cameras we're going to talk about a target camera which if we play this here will target where the camera is looking exactly at one point as well as this motion camera which will simulate the idea of a person having the camera in a shoulder rig so getting some more natural movement. And if we pop back out into our full scene, this last one here, that's this camera crane, which would be the opposite idea of having, you know, that natural handheld movement if you have a camera on a really smooth cinematic crane with all of the parts linked together and really smoothly animating. So I'll just delete all of these and kind of start from scratch and we can build these and put these in this scene. And I have a and I have that same sort of basic scene I had before with a big sweep and a couple blocks and lights just to kind of light things. So just enough for the camera to have something to look at. So the way I'm going to get these is if I hold down on the camera button, we can see that we have target camera, stereo camera, motion camera, and camera crane. So I'm just going to grab that target camera. And this is our first one. And this one's pretty basic. If I look at four views, all this one is really doing is adding this camera target tag up here. So if I move the camera around, there's the camera and there's this camera target. So moving the camera will always keep the camera pointed at that one target, which in this case is just building out a null. So in this view, I'm going to pop into the camera and from overhead, as we move this camera, it stays pointed directly at this. And all this is doing is if I delete this, it's just building a camera and adding a right click Cinema 4D target tag and then building a null to put in here. So if I just undo that and grab our target camera, it's basically just skipping that step. So again, we have our camera, our target tag, which is saying which object it is, which in this case, it's this null that it's made. So it's just a quicker way to get that. So the use of this one is pretty straightforward. If in this view, I again, look at the camera, what I could do is put this null, say exactly on this block or the target object could even be the block and then no matter where I move the camera it's always going to be looking at that. So I could have some camera animation say that I'm just going to keyframe the position and rotation over 90 frames so I'll drop this down just so it's not such a huge timeline. Move my camera, maybe move it up, add another keyframe, shift out to go to the beginning and if we play looking in this view we can see that it's staying pointed at that. And the idea with this is that this could also be animated. So say that it's not just the block, it's this null. If I grab my camera target, which is just this null, say I keyframe the position of that. So that goes from here, make a keyframe, and then at 90, maybe it's moving over here. You can see that the camera's following that motion as well. So it can be a really useful thing to point the camera at an object if the object is moving or if you need to kind of follow the movement of something while the camera is also moving. That might have been the same exact sentence twice in a row, but just trying to make the point. So pretty straightforward. I'll delete that. And the next one is the stereo camera, which is, again, just taking a regular camera and changing some settings. So all it's doing is by popping this camera view and look from the top, it's just going under stereoscopic and changing this from mono, which is be our one camera, to symmetrical. And what we're going to get with this is if we look in really close here, it's defaulted to show all cameras and symmetrical multiple cameras. So it's basically adding a second camera so we could get a 3D image if we were making a 3D shot. So we could have the left frame and the right frame and however 3D movies are made. And the main use of how that's being calculated is under stereoscopic, we have our zero parallax, near plane, and far plane. So if this was a 3D image, if you watch 3D movies, there's the main area that's in focus and it's kind of faking the foreground and background out of focus. So you have 
this zero parallax near plane and far plane that you can move these around. And I'm not going to lie, I'm not working on Avatar 2 right now, and I know probably the least about this one, so I'm not going to pretend like I know more than I do. Um, but as far as I understand, that's kind of what this one would be used for. So I'm not going to spend too much time on that one. Let's just move on. And if you're working on a big 3D movie, maybe that's one to look a little further into. But I want to focus on the other ones that I have been playing around with and do understand a lot more. So the next one I want to get into is this motion camera, which can be a lot of fun. But the first thing I want to do is make sure I don't have something selected when I put that in, because if I do, I'll just do this wrong on purpose first. If I click motion camera and have my plane selected, it's going to drop this into the scene, but it's going to be pointing it exactly at that floor, and that's not what we want. So if you accidentally do that or start to try and explain this and have to redo the tutorial, that would be why. So I'm going to make sure nothing is selected, and I'll just go into my full view and click motion camera. And what this is going to do is drop in this motion camera setup, a path, a target, and our motion camera with a motion camera tag on it. So there's a little more going on with this one, but it can be a lot of fun to use. The idea behind this is that there's this guy that's mimicking the idea of using a shoulder rig and kind of mimicking some of the natural floatiness and movement you would get if you were filming in this way. So if we just play this without doing anything and not being in our camera view yet, you can see that he's kind of floating around a bit and shaking and it's mimicking not fully handheld and kind of jittering way too much. But if I look in my camera view and play, we're getting some of this natural kind of imperfections and movements that you would be getting. And it's a good style and you might want that if you're mimicking this kind of style. The other things that are added is a target and it's automatically adding a tag for a path. So if I pop out of this view, the best way to use this one is if you imagine he's probably gonna be looking at something, which would be this target, traveling along a path, which could be this path that it's defaulted in that we could animate him from position one and two. And if we look at our motion camera by clicking on that, we have a lot of these settings inside motion camera that affect that whole idea of it being on a shoulder rig. So if I look a little in here, the first one is the camera and what that looks like. And the second one is this rig. So you can change it from this mode of a figure to just a simple line to kind of mimic the idea. But I kind of like this guy. It's really funny that he's in there and it's kind of fun to work with and see him hopping around. So I'm going to leave that in. And we have the height of our rig. So maybe he's really tall as well as parallax. So where his arms would be from the rig, as well as manual rotation. So if he's twisting around a little and moving the camera in his hands and kind of really creating the idea of there being the separation between what's holding and moving the camera and arms extending out to where the camera is. And if we go down in here, there's a little bit more stuff, which I'll get to in a little bit. So I'll undo a bunch of that stuff because I don't really want him that tall and I kind of want to reset it to where it was. So the idea, like I said, is he's traveling along a path and is going to be looking at something or a series of things, which is why this can, one can be really cool. So let's say if we move this target exactly over our first cube that I have in my scene and pop into my camera view and play, now he's always going to be looking at that. So how this is working is rather than just animating the whole rig around using keyframes, we can animate along this path or change this path or make a completely new one. And how that's doing that is similar to an aligned spline path, but adding it into this motion camera tag. So under animation, under the tag, there's what path it is and camera position A and a meter from zero to a hundred. So if I just pop out of this view, animate this camera position A from 0 to 100, he's going to move along this and look at our target. So this is already looking pretty interesting because now if we undo that and I'll command click this to set a keyframe, go ahead 90 frames and put it at 100 and then command click again. Now if we back up, you can see he's moving along this path and he's going to be rotating and looking at that. But if we just scrub through, we're not getting the simulation of the whole bounciness, which is what this is useful for. So if I extend my timeline to say like 200, just to get an idea of what's happening after this and drag this out. And now if I play this, 
and we'll kind of watch him go through this, you can see that at the end he's still kind of bobbing around. And this can be good because we're getting the camera animation through this whole path, and then we're also getting this kind of bounciness. So I'll play this through the view of our camera, and we can see we're getting a little bit of that as well as this, which is more noticeable at the end, but is still happening during the whole sequence. So now a couple of things, let's talk about swapping out this path, getting a little more advanced with the target and really customizing this bounciness, floatiness that's happening with the rig. So as I mentioned, this camera position and spline is really just if you had a camera and right click Cinema 4D tags align to spline, it's adding that inside of all of this. So how this is working is all it's doing is there's this path spline that's grouped together just for convenience and on the motion camera tag, there is path spline and you could drop one in. So if I just delete this spline and say that if I grab my drawing tools and I'll just do freehand and wing it here, if I just draw from the top view, a line around this, great, that's, a, that's just a fine path, who cares? It doesn't need to be perfect. And click on this tag and then I can drop this into path spline A it's now replaced that and we still have our camera animation. So I'll play this from outside the view and you can see that he's moving around this path now from zero to hundred and still bobbing and weaving the whole time. And that's good. So this is how we could customize that path. And even if I want to customize it further, if I grab that spline and make sure that I'm on point mode, I can now grab this. I could move any of them. I could have it go up in 3d if he's, walking around with the shoulder rig, but also can magically fly. And then if I back up and play this, we can see that it's gonna now follow the same path from zero to 100 and now he's on a roller coaster and that's cool. And we could also grab our tag and always move that keyframe. So if I wanted this to take 200 frames and then I'll just make this 300 total and span that out. This makes the whole movement process a lot easier because we don't have to worry about the actual camera animation of position. We can just move around the spline and animate in the tag zero to hundred and save a lot of the work. So let's just take a look at what's even going on in this and say if this would even be useful. So here's it's going Oh, he popped up. Now he's flying around. Cool. So that's the idea and it's still kind of bobbing here at the end. So how this floatiness is working is if we click on the tag again and go to motion under this tab, we can see that there's footsteps, head rotation, camera rotation, and camera position and intensity for all these. And this is how much it's moving naturally without keyframes to mimic this handheld shoulder rig idea. So if I go back to the beginning and I'm just gonna delete these frames, these keyframes, I mean, just so we don't have to deal with that. So if I just play this again, kind of bobbing, kind of smoothly going around, and why it's automatically doing this is because camera rotation and position is set to 100. So if I zeroed all of these out correctly, zero, 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 and then play, nothing is gonna happen because we've completely removed that. And if I look outside of this, now he's just frozen in time and he's not moving at all. So if I put these, back up to 100 or say more than that at like 300 and play this, you can see now he's really shaken. And if we hop in our camera view, we're gonna get more of this. So the more that we keep turning each of these up, the more of this randomness that we're gonna keep getting. So I'll just put that back down to 100, 100. And you can see that that's kind of smooth, natural. The other thing that we can animate is head rotation. So on that angle, of rotation in addition to this if he's rotating left and right and if we pop out of this he's kind of adding an additional parameter of that rotation and the other thing is footsteps so this is going to animate as this camera position is moving to mimic the idea of taking footsteps so so this doesn't look completely ridiculous I'm gonna grab my spline path again and just move that one point back down just because you can't take giant footsteps that big or it could but it would look a little weird with my demo and just to talk through this one i'm going to zero everything out and we'll look at just footsteps so if i have 
footsteps on say 200 and look at my camera view and play, again, nothing's gonna happen because it's related to the actual movement of the whole thing. And it's mimicking the idea of as the person is moving, they would also be taking steps. And again, if you're doing production, you'd wanna minimize this, but if you're trying to get kind of this floaty idea of mimicking a, a handheld shoulder rig camera, a little bit of this can make it look a lot more realistic. So again, if I turn this up to 200, now under the tag for animation, if I do again animate this from zero to 100 over 200 frames, and I'll again command click. Now if I back up through this and play, we can see that we're getting really exaggerated footsteps. And this is way too chaotic, but for the sake of explanation, if we back up and play, we can see that he's kind of hopping along at 200% intensity of footsteps. So you can go really overboard with these if you want to do, and it would go beyond the idea of a shoulder rig because now he's holding this camera and animating this around and trying to look at this. So this is not how you would ever want to hold a camera. But if we add a little bit of this, maybe like 25 percent footsteps and then let's just do like 50 for the rest of these and then play and see if this was a good idea. You can see that we're kind of still going along this track and it's smooth camera motion but we're getting a little bit of that smooth random movement that you would get if there's actually a person doing it. So maybe let's put footsteps at 50 and then each of these at 100 to kind of see the difference and that's the convenience of this working with these meters because you don't have to keyframe stuff on and off. It's just properties that are changing this and maybe a little too big on something. So we'll just kind of take some of those down and it doesn't have to be exact, but now at least we're getting a little bit of smooth movement and maybe the, the half circle wasn't a good idea for this one. So let's just simplify this and I'll delete that spline. So he's not going to be doing anything and I'll just draw a straight line. Maybe he's coming down a hallway and trying to keep focused on this cube. So I'll just drop that new spline into here under the tag for animation, then drop that spline into spline path A. And now maybe my explanation will be a little clearer. So he's walking down this hallway, trying to focus on this. And this can be you know, a good thing. You don't want it to look always fake. And that can kind of be the issue with CG cameras as they look unnatural and it's very clearly just moving from point A to point B. If you're doing production, you don't always have all the gear to do that. So you have different things like shoulder rigs and trying to get smooth movement, but you still have some of this natural human randomness that you know we're used to seeing a lot. So it can be a good thing to mimic this. And so he's going right up to that cube and probably too far. So we could, again, just grab our spline path and I'll just delete that last one. And that's fine. He only goes to point three because we don't want him to walk quite right on top of it and again back up and play and now we're getting this camera movement and you could do this with the regular camera of just have two position keyframes from point a to point b but what's nice about this is we're also getting this randomness added to it that's mimicking a human person actually holding this and that can be really powerful to add to your little bag of tricks the last thing i mentioned is there's this target but what's nice about this is if we look under animation for a camera position, as well as target, you can have multiple targets and say while he's doing this, he's looking at cube one, but then halfway through this, he starts to look at something else and you would get this, you know, if you are a person and you're walking with a camera and you notice something else or you wanna focus on a different subject, what we can do is I'm just gonna hold command and duplicate this target. So we have say target B and then under the tag, for target A2, so maybe I should have called it A2, but it's fine. I'm gonna drop in target B, and then it's gonna light up this target position A1 to A2. So what we can do is also keyframe that. So maybe say this target is way over here, and I'll kind of move that into position in my top view as well. So maybe it's past that cube, maybe it tries to look at the cube, but misses and that's fine. And I'm gonna command click that. And then at the end of this, turn up that and during this camera move he's going to also and change what he's looking at from position a to a2 or b or however you want to think about it so now if i back up and play the only animation that we have is 
camera position A and target position A1 to A2. So we've only added two keyframes in our whole big timeline, but we're getting all of this nice movement. While this is happening, he looks over here. Maybe there's something over there. And you can just keyframe the position from zero to 100 and animate things like multiple targets from zero to 100 and then just move those to where you want it to and it's automatically gonna update and you don't get a ton of keyframes and messiness to just get kind of a basic thing and you get all this bonus little floatiness that you would get with a real person or this little green stick figure holding this camera. So motion camera can be a really good one to use to kind of get this kind of movement. So I've been going on about the same thing with about 20 different ways to say the same thing for long enough, so I'm gonna move on. Let's talk about the camera crane, and I'm just gonna delete all this stuff and get a clean scene. So if we wanna add in our camera crane, we just click and hold on the camera button, and I'll go down here to camera crane, and what this is gonna do is drop this rig of a camera crane with a camera attached to the end of it that we can animate all sorts of different properties. So if we wanted to use this to look at this cube, what I'm going to do is grab this null, which is called crane, and just controls the whole rig. And I could just move that and rotate that whole rig kind of into place to be looking at our box. So now the really great thing about this one is that it's mimicking a really smooth cinematic camera crane that you would use in production. So on the tag for the camera crane, what we can do is separately animate things like the base height, and heading so if we wanted a really tall camera rig and we can animate from left to right the heading as well as the length of the arm and the pitch of the arm the height of the head and rotation of that under heading the width so if it has another extension kind of reaching out as well as just the part that's the camera connected to it and that can pitch and bank as well so a good way to use this is if we got into our camera view on this one and using these controls kind of look at and move around to get our shot so say that this is our first position and what we can do is just command click and animate things like the heading for the base the pitch for the arm the height of the head the heading under head, so that's rotating, as well as, say, the banking pitch in the camera. And you wouldn't need to animate all of these every time, but if we do use this and then say, go ahead in time, like, you know, a second or a couple seconds, and then kind of shift all of this around so it's kind of moving and getting closer to our object and rotating in, and maybe the camera looks up. And I'm just kind of winging this, but we'll hope that this works out and then we'll command click all of these and get a new keyframe for all of them. If we back up, you can see that it is mimicking the idea of a really smooth cinematic crane camera motion. So kind of the opposite of the idea of the little guy with the motion camera is this is gonna be really smooth and cinematic. So if we just play this, we can see that we're really smoothly moving from our box and we're probably a little too close. And that's why it's nice that we have our camera controls as well as this whole crane so I can keep that movement but just kind of move it back a little and then under this tag I'll just drag all those keyframes out to like 200 and drag the original ones back to zero and now under this one if I just back up shift F to go to the beginning and play this you can see that it's really smooth moving camera motion and we don't just have the camera position moving but we have all of these things animating at this crane at the same time like the heading, the pitch, the heading of the height, the height of the head, and the camera banking. So you have all these kind of gears and how this is built, all these nulls connected together that's all twisting and moving this to get really slow, smooth, cinematic camera mimicking it being on a crane. So if I just go back to my original file with all of these in here, so if I back up into my finished file with all of these, we can just kind of close out here and just remind us all that using this target camera, to kind of point at a, an object, our motion camera mimicking this guy with a shoulder rig and getting some natural floatiness, as well as our camera crane that's gonna really smoothly and nicely animate 
and a twist around and get really a cinematic movement mimicking a crane. So these built-in camera rigs are some really great starting points and some great things to use and just remember that they're there in addition to everything we already know about camera animation and camera properties. So I hope you learned a lot. In the next one, I want to get into, if we have a bunch of these, how to use a multi-cam workflow between Cinema 4D and After Effects. So be sure to check out that one. And as always, thanks for watching. And be sure to subscribe on Vimeo and YouTube slash Sean Frangella and Facebook page.com slash Vital if you want to interact and ask for tutorials or just get additional tips. And thanks for watching. I'll see you at the next video.